and welcome back to a new update for an unwound clockwork. Last month I received the biggest box I ever received, but I also sent out the biggest box I ever shipped. Well, but before addressing that elephant in the room, let's talk about the jellyfish. Most of the parts were already finished of course, but I prepared the light bulb, which will be the brain, like the insides of this creature, and then I also turned a nice little tip, which goes on the head of the jellyfish. Um, it still has to be gold plated at some point, but uh, nevertheless I was ready to start with the assembly. The assembly went fine until I started working on this paper dome, which is the head of the creature, and this part really drove me crazy. Um, first I had to figure out the shape of these paper slices and the coloring with um, black tea and coffee to get the right shape of them, but uh, this at least was straightforward. Um, the real challenge started when I tried to fit these slices over the metal armature and it was just so fiddly and in the end I had to use a bit of glue here and there and yeah, I also had to give up on filming this part because it was so challenging and the camera was getting in the way all the time. But um, anyways, eventually I completed it and it's now working as intended and I'm really happy to see how this original drawing of mine actually became a three-dimensional object. So with everything else going on this month, I was just barely able to complete it. And there's still a bit of wiring and rigging left to do in order to prepare it for animation. But I already did a little movement test back there just yesterday. It's still set up. And I wanted to find out, uh, is it animatable and how does it look, of course. And I will use the results of this movement test as this month's animation reward for my patron supporters. Now, let's talk about my new background there. Um, yeah, I was very lucky to get a little subsidy from my city, so I was able to buy a proper metal lathe, which I really wanted to have for many years now. Well, my workshop here is in the third floor of an apartment building, and so my main limiting factor with machines like this is always the weight. Um, used industrial machines are completely out of the question, because they usually weigh hundreds of kilos, if not tons, and I need something which can be carried up the stairs and is actually supported by my wooden floor here. So uh, this machine weighs only 177 kilos, which can be considered lightweight for a machine that size. But anyways, you can imagine it's quite an undertaking getting something like this up into the third floor. And you really know you have some good friends if they offer their help to carrying something like this without even being asked. <laughs> Yeah, but we also rented one of those automatic staircase crawler thingies, which was quite fascinating. <laughs> and with this it was not too much of a struggle to get it into place, but um, still I had to rearrange my entire workshop to make room for it and then later move everything back, so yeah, it was a huge undertaking just to get this machine in place. Just to be clear, I bought this machine at the regular price, but Babeco, the manufacturer, agreed to sponsor this video for showing you some more details about their machine. So, my new machine is a Babeco D6000HS, and it's a precision lathe manufactured by Babeco in Germany. Um, that's the same brand as my little benchtop mill I had for many years now. And when researching uh, this new machine, I didn't come across a lot of images or videos online, so I thought I might as well change this and give you a little bit of an overview about this particular configuration I have here. 
So the machine is 1.2 meters long, the distance between centers is 600 millimeters and the largest workpiece diameter you can turn above the bed is 270 millimeters, which is plenty enough for the kind of work I do. So yeah, it can take quite a bite without any trouble at all. Um, what you're seeing here is one millimeter depth of cut and steel without any lubrication and the surface finish is still decent, I think. Um, keep in mind, this is neither the best nor the most it could do. Um, I'm just getting slowly used to the machine, so this is a quick test and I'm not yet confident enough to push it to its limits. The machine has a very powerful 2.5 kW motor with an electronic speed control and a reversible direction and it still runs from the normal uh, two-phase power from a usual power outlet, which is also quite convenient for a home workshop like mine. And um, the HS in the machine's name stands for high speed. Um, this means this machine is capable of running from 50 up to 5000 RPM, which is especially useful for very low diameter workpieces, which is the majority of the things I do here. It also has a lead spindle for automatic feeding as well as thread cutting, which is especially important to me. And it comes with a big set of change gears for this belt arrangement to configure all the different uh, pitches of different threads. On my machine I opted for ball screws in the two main axes, as this gives me the highest precision and the lowest wear, and it would also allow me to convert this into a CNC machine if I ever feel the need to have one. Being all into precision, I also opted for the digital readout system on the two main axes of the machines, which is extremely useful to quickly hit the target dimensions and know where your tools are, etc. And this one has a resolution of 0.005mm, which is probably enough for what I'm doing here. Other than that, it has all the standard features you would expect from a machine of that size. Um, it has a 30mm spindle bore, a solid tailstock with a Morse taper 2, a rotatable compound slide with a multifix tool holder, and it also comes with a 125mm free jaw chuck from Sentra. Now, thanks to Vabeco for their awesome machine and for sponsoring this video, and if you want to learn more about their products, there's a link in the description down below. I'm confident this machine will serve me well for many years to come, and funny enough, the first piece I made on this giant new equipment was the tiniest piece of insulator for the jellyfish creature, which I machined from Blackhorn. Of course, I can't wait to put it into real use very soon as well, um, but there are quite a few improvements I want to do first. Um, mainly adding a camera fixture to ease the filming, um, adding a proper working light, um, machining a flange so I can fit my 5C collet chuck on it, and also um, making some covers for the machine ways. And as with every new machine, a uh, tool collection has just begun. So right now I have the basics, um, but if anyone is sitting on a box of old lathe tools or multifix tool holders or inserts, um, this could be very useful. So uh, yeah, give me a message if you have something or want to sponsor something. Um, but otherwise I'm fine as well. I will just uh, start collecting lathe tools now as well, I guess. Um, and lastly, I mentioned that I also sent out the biggest box I ever sent this month. So what's this all about? Um, I must admit I'm quite surprised too, but it seems I'm going to have an exhibition. Um, yeah, two sets and most of my robot characters and some of the hands, including the armatures, uh, will be exhibited for half a year at the Augsburger Puppenkisten Museum in Augsburg, Germany. And um, yeah, so if you want to see some of the things I made for the movie, um, they are exhibited there. I put a link in the description down below. And um, yeah, I'm glad to say that they arrived well. Um, for me, the main challenge was packaging everything up on a pallet, which I never done before. But um, yeah, despite uh, being very roughly handled by the truckers, it arrived well. And yeah, I'm quite relieved. So now, what about this month's robot kits? Thank you. 
Okay, so uh, this month you're getting six very similar looking bars and four screws. Um, it's a bit simpler than last month. I will alterate the complexity of the sets so I can balance my workload a bit. Um, but yeah, um, these six bars will resemble the legs of the character. And they're not all the same. Um, first, we have the lower legs, which are a bit thicker than the other parts. Those are those two. And then the remaining four are a bit thinner and two of them have a thread inside and two have a larger hole where the screw can slip right through. So we have basically um, two pairs and one of each piece will form a leg. As you can imagine, the manufacturing of these parts was fairly straightforward, but there's still one interesting feature to point out, and that's these rounded ends of the rods. And as I had to make way over 100 pieces, um, I had to come up with a good solution. And what I did was creating this fixture piece where I could clamp in the brass parts and then rotate the entire thing manually around a pin, so I could create the rounded section with a mill. And this worked out good enough for these parts. Um, it would have helped to have the entire contraption being a bit more rigid. Um, if you're interested, inheritance machining on YouTube has a great example on a concept like this. Um, yeah, but for now I was short on time and this solution worked well enough, I think. Now for the assembly. Um, we start with one part of each kind, of course. And first we use the thin rod with the through hole and insert a screw at one of the holes, just like that. And then we take the thicker part, the lower leg part, and put it over the screw as well. And lastly, we take one of the rods with the thread and hold it behind the entire sandwich and screw in that screw. So it's basically the knee joint, which is now connected. And then we're taking the assembly from last month which has these also two rounded sections on one end. And these are basically the hips. And then we take our leg and put it over this nose part, basically, over the hip. And then we take another one of the screws and insert it through the hole and tighten it. And already we should have a leg which is kind of movable. And all we need to do is to adjust the, the stiffness of it properly. So tighten the knee until you're happy and tighten the hip until you're happy so you have a nicely movable but poseable leg yeah and then you basically just repeat the same process for the other leg as well okay and this is basically the stage of the robot right now um, it should be nicely poseable how you wish and it should be able to sit on its leg already. Um, just a couple of gears and legs sitting around but uh, yeah that's an essential part of a robot. And yeah next month will be some more complex parts. Um, I'm a bit nervous about them but hopefully it will work out as planned. So yeah fingers crossed and have fun with this month's assembly. That's about it from last month I think. Um, sadly I don't feel like I made a lot of progress in February but um, then again it was a shorter month and there were also quite a few other things going on obviously. So um, yeah I'm quite confident there will be more new things to show in March and also Maurice will join me in the workshop again which will help. Um, but honestly I feel a bit torn apart right now by finding time for video making and finding time for commissions and these robot kits and still find some spare time to work on the actual movie. So yeah, that's, that's a bit challenging. But um, yeah, thanks a lot for your support and for your understanding everyone. And yeah, see you next month again. Bye bye.